In this video, we're going to look at graphing exponential functions. We're going to look at graphs of the form y is equal to a to the power of x. We say that a is going to be greater than 0 and a cannot be equal to 1. If we have a is equal to 1, we simply get now a horizontal line at the point where y is equal to 1. So y is equal to a to the x. This now is an exponential graph. An example might be y is equal to 3 to the power of x. We might have y is equal to 6 to the power of x. We might have y is equal to 1 quarter to the power of x. We could also see a range of different graph transformations. We might see, for example, y is equal to 5 to the power of x minus 2. We might see now 4 to the power of x plus 1. What we're going to do is look at the general shape of these graphs, the equation of the asymptote, and also some basic transformations. We say this is an exponential function. Later on, you will meet the exponential function, which is e to the x. We can draw the graph of y is equal to e to the x. e is approximately, this is a constant, this is just a number, 2.718. So this will come in a later topic. Often we use this to model growth and decay. So for example, if we had a rock, we could say its mass was equal to its initial mass. And then we'd have now some exponential function, let's say e to the 4t, where t was the time after the first observation. This is an example of how we could use an exponential function to graph now the mass of a rock. We'll focus on this in a later video. All I want to do now is look at functions of this particular form. What I'm going to do is go ahead now and look at three different graphs. I've got y is equal to a to the x, b to the x, and c to the x. As stated, if I just have 1 to the x, we've got this horizontal line y is equal to 1. A nice place to start is y is equal to 2 to the x. So let's look at the shape. This now is a graph that gets very big very quickly once we're past now the point where x is 0. In less transformed, all of these exponential functions will go through the point 0, 1. 2 to the power of 0 is 1, 3 to the power of 0 is 1, 1 half to the power of 0 is 1. We can see this point when x is 1, we've got y is equal to 2, 2 to the power of 1 is 2. We've got 2 to the power of 4. We've got now, uh, sorry, 2 to the power 2 is 4. We've got 2 to the power 3, which is 8. And you can see that's going to get very steep very quickly. In the same way for negative values, 2 to the power of negative 1 is a half. 2 to the power of negative 2 is a quarter. 2 to the power of negative 3 is 1 eighth. This is going to give 1 sixteenth, 1 32, 1 64th, and so on and so forth. This, for now, big, large negative values of x is going to tend to zero. It won't ever be zero, and we say now that the x-axis of the line y equals zero is an asymptote. And that will be the case for all of these exponential functions, again, unless they are transformed. Okay, when I say transformed, if we had 2 to the x plus 1, so for example now, if I added 1, let's just go ahead and add 1 to this, uh, that just now lifts it up, translates it by one unit. So the asymptote would go to y is equal to 1. And that's what I'm saying in less transformed. Okay, let's now look at y is equal to b to the x. I'm going to choose 3 to the x, and we're going to study this graph relative to 2 to the x. At the point 0, again, it goes through the point 0, 1. This time when x is 1, quite clearly y is going to be 3. This graph is going to grow quicker than 2 to the x. So as we increase positive values of x, this is going to get steeper and steeper and get closer and closer to the y-axis. As we can see, 4 to the x, well, if we stick in x is 1, we're going to get 4. 5 to the x, 6 to the x, and we can see it's getting closer and closer. Let's take it back down to 3. What we'll also see here is now for negative values, it will be below 2 to the x. If we think, if we just put in now negative 1, 2 to the negative 1 is 1 half, yet 3 to the negative 1 is a third. 2 to the negative 2 is a quarter, yet 3 to the negative 2 is a ninth. So again, this is going to tend to 0, but a lot quicker. 
So we have now the x-axis or the line y equals zero, which you'll generally quote in an exam as the asymptote. This can never be zero. And as you see, as we increase the value of b, we can see that it's going to tend to zero quicker and quicker. So for example, now if I had 10 to the x, well here what we've got is 10 to the negative 1, which is 1 tenth, yet 10 to the negative 2 is 1 hundredth, 1 thousandth, and so on and so forth. Okay, let's just take that one off. What we're now going to do is look at fractions and or decimals between 0 and 1, not inclusive of 0 and 1. Let's now put on here uh, 0 0.5. We'll go for 0 0.5. What you might notice is that it now looks very similar to 2 to the x, but it's a reflection. What we've got here is 1 half to the x. So if we just think about it, if we have now 1 half to the power of 1, this is going to give us 1 half. 1 half now to the power of 2 is going to give us 1 quarter. So what we can say is as x gets large, or x tends to positive infinity, y is going to tend to 0. Yet with these ones, we can say now for these values of 3 and 6, as x, so as x tends to positive infinity, y too tends to positive infinity. Yet as x, and we can write this on, tends to negative infinity, y is going to tend to 0. This one just here now, as x, so as x tends to negative infinity, y will tend to positive infinity. So if we just look at this particular graph again, okay, we'll go back. All this is saying now, for this particular function, if I put very big negative numbers in, it's going to get huge. And we could see that. If I had now 1 half to the power of negative 1, this is going to give me now 1 over 1 half, which is equal to 2. If I had now 1 half to the power of negative 10, what this is going to be is going to be 1 over 1 half, and that would be to the positive 10, and that's going to give 1024. That is going to get very big very quickly. So let's just look at these. y is equal to 2 to the x, and y is equal to 1 half to the x. There is a relationship between these in terms of a graph transformation. What we could write is that this is going to be 2 to the negative 1 raised to the power of x. We can use the rules of indices, a to the m raised to the n is a to the m times n. So we're going to have 2 to the negative x. So if we said that this was f of x, well this is going to be f of negative x which means we've got a reflection, so this is a reflection now in, so reflect in the y-axis. So it has all of the same traits, yet essentially in reverse. <clears throat> so if we just look at that, we can see it's symmetric. So if I took this point right here, what we've got now is the, the point on here. If I had one half to the negative one, it's two. Yet if I have two to the negative one, it's one half. Here, if I have 2 to the power of 1, it's 2. Yet, if I have 1 half to the power of 1, it's 1 half. We would see that is exactly the same. Let's do 5x and let's do 0 0.2. This is 5. That's 1 fifth. So, these are the things that you need to do. I've put now as uh, these on here for these uh, values greater than 1. What we've got now is as x gets big, y gets big. As x gets large for negative values, we can say y tends to 0. For values between 0 and 1, we can say as x gets large, y tends to 0. And as x gets large in the negative direction, y tends to positive infinity. Um, do you need to quote those? Uh, I don't know. I think just the, the general shape, understanding the shape, understanding the key features and the asymptote is important. So let's go ahead. In question 19, we asked to sketch a following graph stating the coordinates of any points of intersection with the coordinate axis and the equations of any asymptotes. So what we've got then is y is equal to 2 to the x. So all I'm going to do is draw that. That will look something like so and get very big very quickly. 
I'm going to say to the examiner that I know that this point is going to be 0, 1. I will label it at y is equal to 2 to the x, and we can say now that the asymptote, so asymptote, is going to be the line now x is the x-axis, so y is going to be equal to 0. And I'm just going to draw that on. No matter how negative and uh, large the negative value of x gets, we will never have 0. It just tends to 0, and that's my asymptote. Okay, 5 to the x, well, I can draw that on, and I'm going to put it on the same graph just here, and it's going to look something like so. So what we'll get is coming through, and then it will go through exactly the same point, and it'll do something like that. So y is equal to 5 to the x. Uh, again, the point 0, 1, I've put it on the same graph. So if you were asked to put 2 to the x and 5 to the x on, that's what uh, we have. Um, e to the x is the, the interesting one, which is 2.718 approximately, because its its function is its own derivative, um, which really does help with calculus when when we're dealing with uh, functions later on. But that's, again, that's another topic to look at. Okay, let's now draw one half to the power of x. So this is essentially, now, all we're going to have is this 2 to the x, and this is going to be reflected in the y axis. So it will look something like so. So it will come round. Let's just get rid of that. I've managed to go off the tablet. That's why we've got a straight line. It certainly doesn't do that. Uh, it comes down and tends to zero, so we get that, and it'll do something like that. So we can say that this is y is equal to one half to the power of x. You could write that now as one over two to the x. This is the general notation that we would use. So the asymptote for all of these now is y is equal to zero, and all of them go through the point which you would put on here now zero comma one. So three graphs on here, and it gives you some idea of the magnitude of each of these functions. Okay, we've now got y is equal to 3 to the x minus 1. What we've got here, if I just write it out, if we have now f of x is equal to 3 to the x, what we have here now is f of x minus 1. And that is going to give us 3 to the x minus 1. So all we're doing is translating this now one unit to the right. So we're going to pick the graph up and translate it one unit to the right. So if we consider what that's going to do, and I'm just going to draw this on. Let's go ahead and do that. We're going to have something, and it's not going to be obvious, but we'll have something that looks like that. The asymptote will stay the same place. So we can say now that y is equal to 0, that is the asymptote. So I'm going to put that on. What we need to consider, though, is the point of intersection now with the coordinate axis. This will never cross the x-axis. We're just interested in the y-axis. What we've got here now is x is equal to 0 at this point. So we're going to have 0, and then what we're going to have is 3 to the negative 1, which is 1 third. So that's what we've got. So we can say that this is y is equal to 3 to the x minus 1. That's one way of looking at it. Alternatively, what we could have done is written that this is y is equal to 3 to the x multiplied by 3 to the negative 1. So we could write this as a scale factor. Remember, 3 to the negative 1 is 1 third. 1 third of 3 to the x. And that stacks up with what we've got. Originally, we were going through the point 0, 1. Well, now we're going through the point 0, 1 third because it's a scale factor stretch of 1 third in the y direction. Um, but that's important that you do that. Uh, that's perfectly Perfectly okay to do it. If it was x minus 2, we would move it, and this point would become 0, 1 over 9, um, and so on and so forth. Right, let's look at the next one. 4 to the x plus 2. Well, if we draw 4 to the x, what we're going to have is the simple now exponential graph that looks something like that. Okay, so we're going to have this point, which is going to be 0, 1. What I'm going to do, though, is now translate this. If f of x is equal to 4 to the x, what we've got here is f of x plus 2, and that is going to be now a vertical translation of two units. So what I'm going to do now, hopefully this will just pick up, there we go, 
and we're going to move this up now by two units. So this point is no longer 0, 1, it's going to be 0, 3. The asymptote, which is a horizontal asymptote, is no longer going to be the x-axis or the line y is equal to 0. It's going to be now the line y is equal to 2. So y is equal to 2, and I'll just make my uh, work, uh, my value just here a little clearer. And that's what we go ahead and write. So that is a simple now translation, y is equal to 4 to the x plus 2. If we had now, for example, 4 to the x minus 1 plus 2, then all we would do is simply now 1, 2. That's just two different translations. Okay, so that's all we're asked to do, and we're just asked to do a quick sketch. Okay, this one. What I'm going to do is just write this as follows. y is equal to negative 2 to the x plus 1. So what we've got is 2 to the x. We reflect this in the x-axis. Remember, this is negative fx, and then we add 1. So if I went ahead now and drew, let's go ahead, and in fact, we'll do it in white. Uh, let's draw 2 to the x. 2 to the x looks something like that. So what I'm going to do now is reflect this in the x-axis, and that is going to look something like so. And this point right here, instead of 0, 1, this is going to be 0, negative 1. All I need to do now is translate this by one unit in the positive y direction. So we can see that we're going to come through the origin and it's going to do something like this. So we'll come round like that and end up like so. So on here I'm going to put that this is going to be the point 0, 0 and it goes through the origin. Now what we need to do here is consider the asymptote. So originally it was a line y equals 0 or the x-axis. What we're now going to have is the line y is equal to 1. So if we just put this on, that's going to be something like that. And we can label this up. This is the horizontal asymptote. So y is equal to 1. And let me just put that asymptote. That's what we're going to get. Um, yeah, so there we go. That's We can get rid of all the white stuff. It is the red graph. Just consider now, if we think about this, this can never now be greater than 1. Um, that's what we can see from here. 1 minus now 2 to the x. And that will just give us that asymptote of a line y is equal to 1. So there we go. It's the red one and then the pink line. So that is now sketching exponential graphs of the form y is equal to a to the x. We've looked at the basic ones. We've looked at a fraction, or if you like, a number between 0 and 1, not including either. And then we've looked at some basic transformations.